Okay, welcome back. We're on page 455 talking about how to get the length of a two-dimensional array. And it's not immediately straightforward. One is pretty straightforward. The first length is pretty straightforward. But the second one, you have to actually have to talk to the, the, talk to the, the columns, the rows, and ask for the length of it, which is kind of weird. Um, when it comes time to displaying all the values in a two-dimensional array, uh, you would do it just like this, right? You'd have an inner loop and an outer loop, and you would just have a, you know, a, a print LN to, to display the, the values. Like, no big deal, right? Now, can I use an enhanced for loop on a two-dimensional array? No, because there's no way to... Here's the weird part is, if you did, it would look like it worked, but it would only add up the column. It would never look at any of the rows or the other way around. Look at the rows, but not add up the column. In other words, it can't see the other index. So enhanced for loop is not going to work for you when you're trying to look at all the, like I want to sum all of the hours for, you know, the entire week for all employees all day, right? You would not use an enhanced for to do that. Okay, summing all the elements. Ah, we already did that. I'm moving on. Uh, ragged arrays, page 461. So technically, Java doesn't actually have, I'm going to say this out loud and I promise I'll explain it. Java actually doesn't have two-dimensional arrays. What they have is ragged arrays. Ragged arrays mean technically I could have, instead of having a two by three, I could have a two by, and then the, the second one could be three, four, or five, right? It doesn't have to be two by three. It could, the two has to be two, but the other one could be, you know, four. And then the next row would be eight, and the next row would be a one, right? It's called a ragged array. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because it's not all that important. I'm just saying that when you go to other programming languages, you talk about ragged array, that's exactly what they're talking about. So Java actually uses a ragged array as a substitute for a two-dimensional array. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip section uh, 710 and, and 711. Poof, move on. Uh, and talk about the command line arguments. Okay, so up here at the very top of our application, we have this thing, which is an array of strings. Cool. With a variable called arg. If you were a pirate, you'd love this. It's the args uh, variable. And so if you had this thing on a command line, you would type in, you know, chapter seven space, Mary had a little lamb and Mary would be one of the elements had a little lamb. It would have five elements in it. Each word would be broken out. Now it's difficult for us to do this on the command line since we're running in NetBeans, but there is a way you can do it. Don't, I'm just showing you this as a courtesy, but we will never actually do this. See where it says default configuration? I'm gonna hit customize. And one of the things you could do is to, to simulate you're on the command line, you could add some arguments right here. You could type in Mary had a little lamb. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just saying that's how you could do it in a test environment because we don't really have a way to break out and run our apps while we're running NetBeans. Okay, but if you did, <clears throat> An easy test to see if you have any command line arguments is to ask for the args length. If the args length is zero, that means no one typed in Mary had a little lamb. If it comes back and says five, you go, ooh, that means I have zero, one, two, three, four, Mary had a little lamb. Cool. All right. So you can just imagine how that works. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about, um, um, 468, I believe. Is this thing called a var arg? I know that's a horrible, horrible name. Variable argument, var arg, a var arg parameter. So I'm going to do one first and then I'll explain how to make it work. So I'm going to go down here someplace and I'm going to create me a, a thing called, so this will be static uh, int, call it sum2 because I don't want to call it sum. I think we have some error. And I'm going to say int dot 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 ooh and then like something like num <clears throat> okay so right off the bat you know how I'm gonna do this I'm gonna say int answer is equal to zero and then I'm gonna say return answer 
and then I'm going to go back here in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pretend like this is an array. Or I could put, so I could use a four or four each. I mean, a, I said it wrong, an enhanced four. So let's just use an enhanced four since that's pretty easy. So I'm going to say four int value in num. Then I'm going to say answer plus equals Uh, value. Okay. Now I did it. Now let me explain why I did it. Let's go back up to the top where we can run this thing. So here's how it would work. It would be something like um, system dot out print ln and then you'd say sum to uh, I don't know 12 14 right because it it took two parameters. Well then I'm gonna do let's turn right around again. I just do that a second time. Okay, ln. And this time I'm going to say sum to, uh, I don't know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So one of these took two parameters and the other took four parameters. So how in the world could it figure it all out? So this is just a convenience thing. It's convenient. So if I had not done this technique, this var arg technique, if I wanted to, I would have to build an array with two elements in it and pass the array and then build a second array with four elements in it and pass that array. So this is just a convenience for the human to just put the what would normally be like array elements. You put the this almost looks like an initializer, except you're not using curly braces. You're just you passing them as arguments. So var arg. That's a cool name. You got to admit var arg. Okay, so how is this any better than passing it with, with uh, arrays? Well, behind the scenes, probably not much. It just makes it so the, the poor human uh, doesn't have to build arrays and pass arrays. You can just pass a bunch of numbers and the machine can figure it out. Okay, uh, we're getting ready to change the subject. On page 472, we're talking about the array list class. So an array list is something that looks and acts an awful lot like an array but it's an awful lot more convenient. You remember one of the downfalls or, or, or problems with an array is you can't resize it very well. I mean, yeah, you can do what we did here, uh, here, where I resize the, the 42 array, but actually when I resize it, I put it into another array. Well, what if I just want to resize it without putting in another array? How's that work? Well, it doesn't work very well. So there's a, an alternate technique using an array list. So I'm just going to build one. So I'm going to say array list, and then I'm going to introduce a new thing that we have not talked about called generics. And generics is the thing that says it's sort of like a sub. You know, every every one of these variables has is a data type, right? So array list is a data type, but it ha it has like different flavors, like a subtype. I can have an array list of integers, an array list of strings, an array list of doubles. So it's almost like two different data types, you know, like the primary one being the array list and the secondary one being the other type. Okay. So you do this with angle brackets to tell it what flavor of array list we're using. Well, I'm going to use a, the string flavor and I'm going to call this one um, names. Wait, have I already used names? Oh. Names 12, since I don't have any idea if I've used names or not. I think I have. Is equal to no array list string. Now, this time I do have to use bow legs. Again, wouldn't it be nice if they were convenient? Because when I was doing this was an array, I didn't have to use the bow legs at the end. But here I do. And so I'm going to add the import. But boink. So let me just show you how this thing works. If I said names 12, and I could just add something to the list, add Bob to the list, cool. I can add Sally to the list. So I can very easily, then I could go in there and say, well, you know what, I need to insert something in between Bob and Sally. So I can do all sorts of things, I can say, names 12 add uh, Joe, but I don't want to add Joe in the zeroth position. I want to add him in the oneth position. So typically what would happen is 
Um, whoop, sorry. I add just puts things in here where I want them. I'm sorry, I don't get to choose where I want them. They just add to the end, okay? They just keep adding to the end, adding to the end, adding to the end. So this is pretty cool because I don't have to tell it the size. The size will just figure it out automatically. Isn't that kind of cool? All right, so there's some rules. All right, you got your paper and pencil handy. What are the rules associated with using an array list class? Okay, you create it like any other class, which means with the new and parentheses, the data type must be a class. The data type, like string, must be a class. You're going, what? I'll demonstrate this in a minute. And you can optionally tell it the starting number. If you kind of sort of had an idea of how big this thing was going to be, like you're, I'm going to put 100 names in here, I would just go here and type in 100 right there to give it a, a, a first guess. Now, this is not a hard number. If you never get to 100, that's perfectly okay. If you went over 100, it's perfectly okay. It's not going to cause a problem. It's just that it's a suggestion. I, I think we're going to have 100 names. So you could put 100 in there. And there's some really cool methods. Uh, add, remove, get, set, contains. Um, so one of the things you can do, again, uh, I'm going to go here and say names 12. And see, we have add. And one of the versions of add, this first version of add, was just to add a string. The second version of add was to tell where I want it to go. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say add one comma Joe. And this means I can insert into this guy. Now I couldn't do that with an array. Your arrays, you can't insert and everything else will scoop down. And likewise, if I deleted one of the elements, it would scrunch back up. This guy would. The array would not. I mean, arrays don't have the ability to, to expand and contract when you insert or delete things. So this is pretty cool. All right, let's talk about the advantages. Um, I don't need to know, I don't need to tell it in advance how many there are, that's a good advantage. Um, I can put things in any order. Um, I can delete things in the middle and it'll scrunch up. I can insert things in the middle and it, it expands. So it's actually pretty doggone cool. It even has like a sort routine if you wanted to do that as well. Okay, now, um, so an enhanced four would uh, would be work really well on this because you could just kind of sort of you if you were to use a, a traditional for loop on this guy, uh, it gets it's a little confusing because there really isn't an index you could pretend like as an index. Let me show you how how clumsy this would be. So I'm going to say for int uh, index equals zero. Uh, index less than three, index plus plus, and then I do system dot print l in, and then I say names twelve, and then I have to say get get index. Okay, that that's a little clumsy. Now compare that to the enhanced for guy for int value well, not int string string value in names system dot out print l in value so Enhance 4 really, really, really works well here. Uh, much better than a 4 because I would have to use a, instead of like using indexers, like before you just put it in square brackets, here I actually have to have a, use a method to go in and find the guy, which is not incredibly uh, performant. Okay, we're coming up on the 15 minute mark. You guys know how this works.